Hello? Hello. Is Christina there? No, she's not available. May I take a message? Just tell her that Charlie called. And I will do exactly that, Charlie. Yeah. But she says you love scary movies and that you guys have that in common. She's proud of making a fan out of you. Make a fan out of you is an idiom. That means to cause someone to become a supporter or admirer of something or someone. I didn't really like that band at first, but after seeing them live, they really made a fan out of me. It means that the person was not previously a fan of the band, but after seeing them perform, they became a supporter or admirer of the band. She is? Yeah. She told me the other day, she wonders, what's your favorite scary movie? Uh, The Babadook. It's an amazing meditation on motherhood and grief. Meditation is the act of remaining in a silent and calm state for a period of time as part of a religious training or so that you are more able to deal with the problems of everyday life. Many busy executives have begun to practice yoga and meditation. Meditation can also refer to the act of thinking about something very carefully and deeply for a long time. Let us spend a few moments in quiet meditation. <laughs> Isn't that a little fancy pants? A little fancy pants is an informal term that can be used to describe someone who is perceived as being overly concerned with their appearance, behavior, or possessions in a way that is seen as pretentious or showy. It implies that the person is trying too hard to appear sophisticated or stylish. For example, if someone spends a lot of money on designer clothes and constantly talks about their expensive taste, they might be called a little fancy pants. Similarly, someone who insists on using high-end vocabulary or speaks with an affected accent might also be described this way. It's a somewhat playful term that is usually used in a teasing or joking manner, but it can also carry a hint of annoyance or disapproval. Well, it's elevated horror. Uh-huh. Uh, what does that mean, elevated horror? You know, it's like scary, but with complex emotional and thematic underpinning. Thematic refers to something that is related to a particular theme or topic. It can be used to describe a piece of writing, a work of art, a musical composition, or any other creative work that focuses on a specific subject or idea. The movie had a strong thematic focus on the importance of family. Underpinning generally refers to something that serves as a foundation or support for something else. It can be used in a literal or figurative sense. A strong sense of teamwork is the underpinning of the success of the business. This is not just some schlocky cheese ball nonsense with wall to wall jump scares. Schlocky is an adjective used to describe something that is of low quality or poorly made. It is often used to describe movies, TV shows, or other forms of entertainment that are overly sentimental or lacking in artistic merit. The movie was so schlocky that even the most sentimental viewers found it hard to take seriously. Wall to wall has a few different meanings. Continuous or happening very often or everywhere around you. As in wall to wall traffic on the highway or wall to wall meetings all day long. 
It can also refer to covering an entire space from one wall to another, as in wall-to-wall -wall carpeting or wall-to-wall -wall furniture. During my first year of college, I think I'd have wall-to-wall -wall parties and all the freedom I wanted. The conference room was filled with wall-to-wall -wall tables and chairs. Hmm, that sounds kind of boring to me. Have you ever seen Stab? Once, I think. At a sleepover when I was like 12. Sleepover is an informal social event where one or more people, usually children or teenagers, spend the night at the home of a friend or family member. The participants often engage in activities such as watching movies, playing games, and staying up late into the night talking. Sleepovers are typically seen as a fun and exciting way for young people to socialize and bond with each other. You live in Woodsboro, and you don't know Stab? Well, your mother loves that movie. She talks about it all the time in group. How well do you remember the original? How well is often used as the beginning of a question, which is then completed by the speaker to inquire about the ability or knowledge of the person being addressed. For example, How well do you swim? is asking about the person's ability to swim, while how well do you know Spanish, is asking about the person's proficiency in speaking or understanding the Spanish language. In general, the phrase how well is used to initiate a question that seeks to evaluate or assess someone's skills, knowledge, or abilities in a particular area. I don't know. And it was like super 90s. It's like really overlit and everyone had weird hair. Overlit generally refers to something that is too brightly illuminated. But depending on the context, it can have a few different meanings. In this clip, it means that is inconsistent with the intended mood or atmosphere. As in a horror movie that is overlit with bright colors and cheerful music. Uh, do you remember the beginning? Not really. Not really is a casual response that generally means not completely or not exactly. It is often used to express a lack of enthusiasm or to indicate that something is not fully accurate or correct. For instance, if someone asks if you enjoyed a movie and you respond not really, it means that you didn't find the movie particularly enjoyable or engaging. Similarly, if someone asks if a statement is true, and you respond not really, it means that the statement is partially true or has some inaccuracies. In some cases, not really can also be used as a polite way of saying no. If someone asks if you want a second helping of food, and you respond not really, it can be interpreted as a polite refusal without saying no. I mean, it started with the kill scene, right? They always started with the kill scene. Yeah, that's right. That's right. It's a girl at home, alone. She answers a wrong number and starts talking with the killer who makes her play a game. Would you like to play a game? Tara. Hello? Hello. Is Christina there? No, she's not available. May I take a message? Just tell her that Charlie called. And I will do exactly that, Charlie. Yeah, but she
but she says you love scary movies and that you guys have that in common. She's proud of making a fan out of you. She is? Yeah. She told me the other day, she wonders, what's your favorite scary movie? Uh, The Babadook. It's an amazing meditation on motherhood and grief. <laughs> Isn't that a little fancy pants? Well, it's elevated horror. Uh-huh. Uh, or what does that mean, elevated horror? You know, it's like scary, but with complex emotional and thematic underpinnings. It's not just some schlocky cheese ball nonsense with wall-to-wall jump scares. Hmm. That sounds kind of boring to me. Have you ever seen Stab? Once, I think. At a sleepover when I was, like, 12. Uh, you live in Woodsboro, and you don't know Stab? Well, your mother loves that movie. She talks about it all the time in group. How well do you remember the original? I don't know. And it was like super 90s. Huh. It was like really over lit and everyone had weird hair. Uh -huh. Do you remember the beginning? Not really. I mean, it started with the kill scene, right? They always started with the kill scene. Yeah, that's right. That's right. It's a girl at home alone. She answers the wrong number and starts talking with the killer who makes her play a game. Would you like to play a game? 